In this video, I'll compare what it's like to work on your Mac using the Quest 3 versus the Apple Vision Pro. Which virtual working environment do I prefer and what are the differences in the built-in productivity apps? This comparison is especially interesting because the Quest 3 costs around $500 while the AVP will set you back at least $3,500. Interestingly, the cheaper Quest 3 does an impressive job, so much that I can tell you right now. But before we get into this, let's hear from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Hans VR Lens Inserts. Hans VR is an MRTV channel sponsor, and if you are a glasses wearer, I highly recommend their VR lens inserts. Hans VR offers high quality products at very competitive prices, all while delivering lenses in only a couple of days, no matter where you are. And you're raving about their great service. So go to HansVR.com, get your lenses and use code MRTV for a 5% discount. Thanks to Hans VR for sponsoring the channel. Let's start with my office setup. Here's my desk, featuring my fairly recent Mac Mini connected to a 27 inch display. While I have no problems working with the setup, I often use both the Quest 3 and the AVP to work on a larger virtual display. It's easier on my eyes and a great solution for people with eye issues who need a big screen to work effectively. Before we begin, note that the Apple Vision Pro virtual display only works with Macs. If you have a PC, you'll need a third-party software and I might cover that in a future video. Let's start with the Quest 3. Its productivity app, Workrooms, has gone through several updates and the recent overhaul has made it really useful. You can download it for free and to mirror your Mac or PC in VR, yes, both work, you just need to install a small streamer app on your computer. When you first run the app, you set up your desk by indicating where the edge of your desk is and its height. Once that's done, you'll be sitting in front of your virtual desk in a beautifully designed environment. It's undoubtedly more attractive than my actual office setup and I appreciate that. There's also a rectangular pass-through setup that lets me see my actual keyboard and mouse. It's a clean and practical solution. After setting up the streamer app on my Mac, the app automatically finds my computer. When I click on it, I see my screen on a large curved virtual display. I can reposition the display and adjust its size to my liking. I was surprised at how well I could work on this virtual display. There was no noticeable latency and all my mouse movements and clicks registered as if I were working on my actual screen. The sound was routed directly to my Quest 3 without any issues. I could edit my videos in DaVinci Resolve just as I would on my actual screen. Although the Quest 3's resolution isn't perfect, the virtual screens are large enough to be better than my physical screen, even if it's not as sharp. What's even better is that you can get two more virtual displays for free. Simply click the plus sign and the software will create additional virtual displays as if you connected actual monitors to your Mac. It's incredible how well it works and you don't need extra desk space. One thing Meta needs to improve is the app's buttons though, which can be nearly impossible to press like the ones for adding an extra screen. The app sometimes thinks that you're trying to move the virtual screens instead of clicking the buttons. If Meta adjusts this so that controller inputs are used exclusively in the menu, it would be much better. Other than that, I'm pleased with what Workrooms offers and it works on both Mac and PC. Well done, Meta. Now let's see how the AVP allows me to use my Mac Mini in mixed reality. Using Macs on big virtual screens is built into Vision OS, so you don't need to download any additional software. Just go to the control center and select the virtual display icon. It shows all the available Macs nearby and you just click on the one that you want to use. Once you do, your actual Mac display will turn off and a large virtual display will appear in your AVP. It's incredibly sharp much better than the Quest 3, which makes sense given the AVP's $3,500 asking price and the 4K micro OLED displays. One immediate difference is that the AVP's virtual display is flat, not curved, and you can't change that. 
However, Vision OS 2, which is rolling out later this year, will address this. In terms of latency, there is none, and the virtual screen works just like my actual one. This of course depends on your Wi-Fi connection, so it's best to connect your Mac to your router with a cable. One downside with the AVP is the audio routing, which only works through your Mac. This isn't an issue if you're sitting at your desk with headphones, but it could be a problem if you want to work further away from your computer. The pass-through on the AVP lets me see my entire office, but I prefer the Meta Workspace environment, which offers a rectangular pass-through just for my keyboard, creating the illusion of a perfectly clean desk. With the AVP, you can turn the digital crown to enjoy various virtual environments. You can gradually introduce these environments while still seeing your keyboard. It's not as clean as the solution that the Quest pass-through window offers, but it's workable. Unfortunately, with the AVP, you take off the device, your virtual display connection is cut and your actual display turns on again. You have to reconnect and reposition your screen each time you return, which is inconvenient. Meta Workrooms, on the other hand, maintains the setup when you take breaks. And did I mention that Apple does not allow you to have additional virtual displays? You limit it to one, while workrooms can give you more. This is a definite advantage for Meta's $500 device. However, the AVP does allow you to spawn other Vision OS apps around your virtual screen, which is powerful. You can play Safari windows with crypto charts, your X timeline, or even your latest page turner next to your display. This functionality isn't available in Meta Workrooms, so if you need that, the AVP is the more versatile headset. Considering the sharpness of the AVP's visuals and its ability to spawn any app, working with the AVP is incredibly enjoyable and viable if you need a huge virtual display. In the end, both headsets offer excellent working experiences. I prefer Meta software because it's simple, clean and provides everything I need when working on my Mac at a fraction of the AVP's price. With Meta, I get multiple virtual curved displays, an audio feed and the ability to take breaks without reconnecting. If I could combine the AVP's incredible sharpness and app spawning capabilities with Meta's functionality, we'd have a clear winner. Each system has its pros and cons and I'm fortunate to use both based on my needs. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments which system you prefer. If there's interest, I can make this a series and compare how the headset performs in virtual meetings or when working without a Mac or PC. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to MRTV yet but are fascinated by headsets like the Quest 3 or the AVP, subscribe to the channel now and click on the bell button so they don't miss anything. And you know what? I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.